afternoon and evening ladies and gentlemen my name is Zachary Nolan thank you so much for tuning in we have a lot of reactions to get to but first off this is going to be a tough this is going to be a tough video to make because I actually have so much fun stuff to talk about that has nothing to do with the Winnipeg Jets that I'm I'm not even angry uh tonight I'm just distraught I don't I don't know I don't know what it is you know the sad the saddest thing is is after the second period i had the best reason to be happy i got to take part in the runway shootout competition where the, where you get on the ice and you have to shoot for like the empty net from like a certain ways away yeah i did that and guess what i fucking won it i won it and not just and not with the first shot no i won the damn thing proper i i had a morrissey bobblehead it's Hellebuck's 500th game. There's so much fun stuff to talk about in Moose Watch coming up. And I got nothing. I feel empty. This whole game, this whole day feels empty. Let's get... Uh, first, I'd like to show you guys this clip. Because my friend recorded this to me for me. A reaction here. Yes, so they gave us sh old Sherwood sticks and a helmet and got us to take four shots uh, inside the circle, blue line, opposite blue line, and then like far net practically. So the first shot, I'm like, I have no idea. Like the nets, the this ice is still chipped up, but I'm like, all right, I'm just going to put this in. Raised it, completely whiffed on it. It went far wide. Then the next one, not much better. And then I, I clutched up for the next two. Anyway, the reason I'm saying this with such happiness is because that's the only highlight of the day. Jets don't... I don't get it. I can't... First off, I can't believe Monaghan missed the net. I can't. I That broke me. But the, the harder thing to fathom is just how this game got to this point. First off, here's the great... 500 game tribute for Connor Hellbuck. Ladies and gentlemen, playing his 500th National Hockey League game. And on cue, the frickin' uh, dehumidifier starts buzzing. Love that. Um, nothing really happens in the first period, except a lot of penalties. Jets penalty kill. Good in the first period. Um, Hellebuck making the saves he has to. That being said, Jets didn't play good the first period. No. The 
Gabe Velarde's back in the lineup, and Gabe Velarde looked like easily the best guy in the top line. First off, I'm glad they separated Shifley and Connor in the third period. Should have and did that in the first. Ehlers, Shifley, Velarde. That's your top line. If you are if you are a real organization and not the fraud that you are acting like, have a top play a top six. You don't need a perfection line. Play it. Play the goddamn t game like there's a top six. Also, you don't have a perfection line, so it doesn't even matter. Um, Connor Shifley need to be split up. Neil Pionk needs to sit at least two games. I don't know why that guy was in tonight. Like, how is it that Samberg gets gets the hook because Logan Stanley's playing good and Neil Pionk has analytically been the worst defenseman in the past eight games? Gotta be something like that. Jets get the ball rolling. Nikolai Ehlers scores to make it one other reaction here. Block it. And then, there's a lot wrong with this shift. First off, people are dogging on the first line here. There's two major mistakes here. First off, top line makes a bad turnover. Um, and secondly, Josh Morrissey with a bad pinch. He pinches at the opposing blue line. So, Ottawa goes down and score and has a four-on-one with their fourth line on the ice against Winnipeg's top line. And you, it, it goes exactly how you'd expect. No! Joshua. Yeah, of course. Josh! He's got the whole Benetti shit. 1-1. And then, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, didn't watch the second goal go in. I was on my way down. Uh, they called us to come. They, 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 they pulled us out of our seats with eight minutes left in the second period. So I, I was on the staircases when this goal went in. And you know what? Truth be told, I, I, I can't bring myself to go back and look at the highlights of this game. So this is my reaction to it. They're taking me down right now, and we've already missed the goal. <laughs> We're off to a bad start last. You notice I'm smiling through a bit of that? It's because I still had hope. I legitimately, it feels like the Jets got knocked out of a playoffs plot tonight. It, it feels like the Jets got eliminated tonight. No, they didn't. But we, we feel it, don't we? This was fan appreciation night. Oh boy. Love that. As you saw in the first uh, pre-intro, they got booed off the ice. Deservingly so. But yeah, so... Second period, end, end of the second period. What time is it? Moose watch! It's moose watch. So, I actually have good news in Moose Land. Um, actually, two sets of good news. One, Moose are still on fire. They've grabbed three out of a possible four points against the Toronto Marlies in their series. Um, in a back and forth game with the Marlies, Marlies hit one post. They made one mistake. They hit one post. Moose capitalized to tie the game later. Uh, and then Carson Golder with his first ever AHL goal, uh, who is a pickup this year, uh, on a two year deal for the Manitoba club, picks up his first ever goal. That ends up being the game winner in a 4 3 win. Moose are actually, they're still going to have to do a play in round against Texas for sure. But they might, they're actually closing in on home ice advantage against Texas, which is really exciting. Here are the clip. Also, before we get into that, guess what happened in the ECHL? Winnipeg Jets prospect goalie Ascari Salmanen, who has been having a bad year. Let's not sugarcoat this. This has been a bad year for Ascari. He's lost any, he's, lo he's lost his AHL position. He's lost his AHL backup position. He's in the ECHL right now. He's struggling mightily. The Norfolk Admirals are now on a 10-game heater, 
and just made the playoffs for the first time in 10 years, I believe. And Oskari Salmanen scored a goddamn empty net goalie goal. Here are all the clips of that, including the goalie goal reactions here. 95 seconds left of the period. Goes up top. Barto long shot. He scores! Parker Ford tips it in the middle of the ice. And the Moose tie it late in the first. Here they come into the zone. And Nikonen able to burst by and scores! Henry Nikonen from out of nowhere. And it's 3-2. In for Ford, right side Capobianco, he'll rip and he scores! Kyle Capobianco, and it's 3-3, what a power play goal! Managing a rolling puck, spins away from Ellis, now jukes out in the middle of the ice, ahead for Golder, Golder, nice spin move into the zone, he frees himself up, goes to the goal, and he scores! Carson Golder, his first AHL goal, and the Moose lead, 4-3! Case in point again, Salmonen, he's got it, he's going to shoot to the empty net, down the ice! Yes! He did it! Oskari Salmonen has scored a goal at Norfolk Scope! His teammates ce celebrate with him! Go through the line, baby, go through the line, I love it. He, he tried that earlier in the year! Yep. Isn't the grass so greener anywhere outside of Winnipeg right now? I I can't I can't fathom this. I can't even comprehend this. There were so many mistakes tonight. First off, so many blind passes in the O zone that just gives away possession. The four check Ottawa was the harder four checking team. Face offs weren't great either, but because Ottawa sucks at face offs, it's pretty much battle of a very resistible force and a really movable object so we pretty much sat at 50 percent the entire night because both teams didn't know how to win a fucking face off um the one thing i i i liked bones in post in in bones post game speech there's one thing i liked he said we have to come out with the desperation in the first period that we have in the third period and i agree with that I would also like to agree, though, that this team didn't show as much desperation as it could have. Desperate is putting pucks on net. Desperate is trying to put a puck on net, even from a bad angle, because you're trying to risk that puck going in the net. There was no desperation in that thing. If anything, there was overcompensation, and there was overthinking. First off, the Jets mercifully, mercifully, on their 20th power play in a row, score to make it 2-2 reaction here. Why do you have to go across 20 feet? Shoot! Yeah! Let's go! Yeah! Yes! That was their first goal in 20 straight power plays. And then Brendan Dillon takes a high-sticking... I thought it was Logan Stanley at first. Brendan Dillon takes a high-sticking penalty with under three minutes left in the game. And I can already feel this. First off, Anton Ford's, uh, Corpus Allo has already made... Uh, sorry, Jonas Corpus Allo has already made an crazy save on a weird dump-in deflection. Um, <clears throat> thoughts start to be swirling in my head at that point. Um, but yeah, then after... A puck that kills Alex Iafalo's leg. A big block from Nate Schmidt. They can't clear it. They get absolutely destroyed internally in their own zone. Nate Schmidt has two chances. One of those has to go out. Can't get it. Brady Kachuk with the go-ahead goal with under two minutes left to play. And then, well, honestly, what they finally did mercifully with five minutes left was they put Ehlers with Velarde and Shifley, which is all we've been fucking saying for, for weeks. But what do we know? We're just fans, right? Um, 
Again, it has to be said. This is extremely... I scored as many goals tonight as the Winnipeg Jets. Just letting that sit right there. Just sitting right there. The... <sighs> Sean Monaghan... Jets get gifted a power play. They get another power play. Um, they originally, it eventually gets to a 5-3. The 5-3 is irrelevant because there's three seconds left in it. They get a 5-4 power play with under a minute left. There's pressure. There's pressure. No one's taken the shot. Finally, they get a shot from Morrissey, which is good. Then they get the perfect fucking play. Monaghan is in front of the net. The net is wide open. And he tries. And I, at first, I thought he missed the net clean. At first, I thought he it went in. Um... At first, it turns out he wasn't even trying to shoot. He was trying to one-tap it to Velarde and missed. And I feel like that play is indicative of everything wrong with the Winnipeg Jets. Not getting the crucial goal at the end of the game when they need one. After a penalty kill, that a failed penalty kill puts them in a hold and a power play unit that was sluggish. I don't give a crap that they scored one power play goal. Way to go. You had like six power plays. Um, and it all revolves around... One guy with an open net passing off an opportunity instead of putting the puck in the net. This team, if I could sum this team up in anything, is is that it's plagued. They're they're cursed. I don't know what to say. And they're frauds. Frauds like contenders don't lose six games in a row. Let's just line that out right there. Contenders don't lose six games in a row any point in the year. I'd argue. And they're doing it at the worst time of the year. I'm not mad. I'm just hurt. I expected better. I thought for something minuscule. And I'm still left completely destroyed. Please leave a like on the video. Not for the game, but for the video. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. And we will see you next time. One, Nicola Anders. Chips it through, gets it right.